So now we come to the place where uh, arithmetic modulo n, or remainder arithmetic, starts to be a little bit different. And that involves taking inverses and canceling. Let's look at that. So first of all, we've already observed that we have these basic congruence rules, that if a and b are congruent, then c and d are congruent, then a plus c and b plus d are congruent, a times c and b times d are congruent. So that's the sense in which arithmetic mod n is a lot like ordinary arithmetic. But here's the main difference. Let's look at this one. 8 times 2 is 16, which means it's congruent to 6 mod 10, which is the same as 3 times 2. So 8 times 2 is congruent to 3 times 2. And you'd be tempted, maybe, to cancel the 2s. And what happens then? Well, then you could discover that you think that 8 is congruent to 3 mod 10, which it ain't. So in short, you can't cancel arbitrarily. You can't cancel 2 in this case in particular. So that leads naturally to the question of when can you cancel a number? Uh, when can you, can you cancel a number k when both sides of an equality are multiplied by k and I'd like to cancel k? And the answer is simple, when k has no common factors with the modulus n. So the proof of that is based on the following idea. Let's say that a number k prime is an inverse of k mod n if k prime times k is congruent to 1 mod n. So k prime is like 1 over k with respect to mod n, but of course 1 over k is going to be a fraction um, uh, unless k is 1. And so k prime is going to be an integer that simply acts like 1 over k. So how are we going to prove this? And it's going to turn out to be an easy consequence of the fact that the GCD is a linear combination. So how am I going to prove, find this k prime that's an inverse of k? Well, remember, given the GCD of k and n is 1, I have a linear combination of k and n is 1. So s times k plus t times n is 1. But if you stare that, at that for a moment, what that means is that k prime is simply the coefficient s of k. So all you have to do is apply the pulverizer to k and n to get the coefficient s of k in the linear combination of s of k and n that's equal to 1. Well, let's look at that more in slightly more carefully and, and see what's going on. Um, I have that sk plus tn is 1. So that means, in particular, since they're equal, they're certainly congruent uh, to each other modulo n. sk plus tn is congruent to 1 mod n. But n is congruent to 0 mod n. So it, this becomes t times 0. And we're left with sk congruent to 1 mod n which is exactly the definition of S being an inverse of K. Now, I can also cancel K if it's relatively prime to N. And the reason is that if I have AK equivalent to BK mod N and, and, uh, and the GCD of K and N is 1, then I have this K prime that's an inverse of K. So I just multiply both sides by the inverse of K namely k prime, and I get that the left-hand side is a times k, k inverse, uh, and the right-hand side is b times k, k inverse, and of course that's a times 1 is equivalent to b times 1, and so a is congruent to b mod n. So I can cancel in that case trivially. And, uh, uh, and in fact, you can work out the converse implications. The punchline of this is, well, first of all, this is the cancellation rule. You can cancel providing that the GCD of k and n is 1, that k is relatively prime to n. So this is the summary. k is cancelable mod n if and only if k has an inverse mod n, if and only if the GCD of k and n is 1, which I can restate as k is relatively prime to n. And that's the story.